Do you get the temple name? You know, it has been a while since I've talked about a proper game before. Why don't I do that more often? Cult of the Lamb is a game I've heard about for years. I never really took interest, but I enjoyed the art style of it. That's saying I have seen the two bigger fan animations with the Gravity Falls Lamby dance and Mash's animation. I didn't even have to push last time. All right, let's all just take a step back. No, I didn't mean- When, after playing the game, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I, I only said it'd be nice to see my mom again sometime. But I never really got into it. But I decided, what the heck, why not? And quite frankly, I'm not underwhelmed. To take to mind with this small review, I have played a bunch of breeding fight games for years. Basically any iOS game that copied that formula. There's similarities, but for a small spoiler warning, Cult of the Lamb is everything I wanted in these games. Also, I haven't completed the full game, so if any of these things I say change, feel free to tell me. What I don't like often with the building or breeding games is how little there is to do after maybe 10, 20 minutes of gameplay. But Cult of the Land always keeps you doing something, and so that you never have a reason to stop playing unless you want to. You have limitless things to do with your cult, whether it's making their food, making follow with buildings, cleaning up shit, or even doing small quests for some of the members that grant bonuses, which is a very important part Part of the game since if you don't do the necessary part of the game you can't progress. And yeah you may spend a lot of time in battles getting good loot but if you do it's at the cost of dying or losing faith in the followers. Yeah that's why the arsehole left. You need members to open up doorways, sacrifice to get better loot etc. So if you're not a fan of this side of the game I'm sorry but you're anchored to it regardless. But me? It's very relaxing. Kind of like Minecraft except the creeper doesn't blow me up from behind. I also like that the bosses you fight are just the culmination of the characters you fight. While I do like the followers that come and go, I think a problem I don't enjoy is the old age that comes along way too fast. Yeah, can I get, uh, death? What? They'll be in your cult for maybe less than a month in the time of the game, and are suddenly just old. It's so you have to keep getting new cultists with different perks to them, but you can never have the same ones. The soup is cold and the salad is hot. How is that even possible? Though, with them getting older, I then know who I'm sacrificing so I can get better loot. Either way, I like that you can pet certain cultists and that they'll ask you to do random shit like eating a bowl of shit. D don't ask me. Their quests are based on faith as well, so risking their devotion is wavered on if you choose yes or no. And they'll often give you an excuse to go back and find certain things in areas. But I also like that even just going to small trips around the areas has a chance to affect the faith and followers by how long you're gone. I mean, yeah, besides fishing, you're not exactly going to play knuckle bones for more than a couple games. In terms of the gameplay, it gives me a very strong vibe of Dead Cells, with starting weapons each new time, progressing different runes and stages, swapping out weapons and abilities with shops, etc. Honestly, I'm surprised these two haven't collaborated yet. Their weapons would work perfectly together. No! But no, yeah, I love the combat. It's simple and easy to use, which I don't think it needs to be anything more. But it's also figuring out what the best way is to attack and in the setting you're in. For the claws, I try to swing the weak punches out before hitting the combo, dodging constantly with a sword, trying to get enemies in range or in a line, etc. When you have to worry about traps and multiple enemies surrounding you, again, the gameplay itself is simple but gets more difficult to fight against, but easier to move the more you get used to it. I also like that the bosses you fight are just the culmination of the characters you fight, so you know how to handle one target with the same abilities you've just been fighting. Later on you get more weapons by killing bosses up to a Nora, though I feel as if there should be more weapons going forward, but the blunderbuss seems like a good sign for more to come. Oh, and dude, I haven't even brought up the fucking art style. First of all, rip to the deads because I know they work on Unity. But my god, I don't know how they blended these models so well to make this paper aesthetic world. It moves so fluently and amazing, the character designs for every monster don't look the same unless they share similar powers. But this is what I love about indie. They use these innovative styles with the budget they have, and every time it makes their game just stand out infinitely more than any game that focuses on realism. I also love the character designs with the NPCs, 
My favorite is the tarot card guy, but I also like the fun detail for the fishing guy. Sorry if I don't know any of the names for any of the characters. The only criticisms I have is the editing builds feels clunky and laggy. I don't like a quit from the system where I just try to back out and build something else. I feel as the auto save button should also be saving time during your time in the cult or when a significant event occurs, and not just when you're through a portal or you enter or leave a crusade. My game crashed twice and I had to repeat a lot of stuff I felt really was just boring. I did get most of it back, but that's not the point. And after some level, I think 4 or 5, it's just a maximum of 100, no matter how high a character is. I really just don't have a lot of criticisms for this game besides that. Overall, this game is such a chill and fun experience. You know, when you're not fighting, of course. And I might make a part two when I actually finish the rest of it, and to talk about the other half of the game I didn't talk about, and unlock the rest of the game. Honestly, I recommend you buy the game when you can. Anyways, Spirit out. I knew it was a good idea to make everyone fucking purple.